now for TNA, what's the whole process that made you get into the wrestling business again with TNA? Oh boy. This is, Devin, this is painful for me to recall. It really is. Um, Jeff left, Jeff didn't think that he was going to be treated fairly by Vince when he left. Uh, the, the pipeline of pay-per-view money is real long. So Vince owed Jeff for three or four pay-per-views and, you know, a bunch of money. And Jeff feared that he wouldn't get paid. And so he was booked against China and was supposed to put the title on her and said, Vince, I want to get paid for the pay-per-views and, and the shots you owe me or I'm not going on. And in the wrestling business, there's not much you can do that is worse than that to a promoter. So, but it happened. And uh, I blame Russo. Well, I mean, you can't blame somebody else because Jeff did it, but Russo was a horrible influence. And so when to tell you how much it affected Vince. I don't know if you saw the night WWE and Vince took over from WCW, but he publicly fired Jeff in the ring. Did you see that? I, I recall it now that you mention it, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so now WCW's gone and and uh, so it's uh, Jeff, Jeff was used to making huge money. Made big money at WCW, made big money at, at uh, WWE. And now there was no place for him to wrestle. So Jeff comes to me and says, I've got an idea about starting my own wrestling company. Will you help? And I said, oh, son. I said, I'm out of the wrestling business. And so, he says, well, you want to go fishing? So, I said, yeah. So we go to New Orleans. Bob Rod has got a fishing boat. The seas were terribly rough. Jeff got seasick, but at any rate, during that trip, Bob Ryder and Jeff are telling about this concept of Tuesday Night Titans, and that they can sell it for $9.95 and we can get enough without national TV. And so I tried to talk Jeff into uh, coming to work for my construction company. And I offered him, I said, how much would, how much would you make at WCW or WWE? And he told me, I said, I'll pay you that. And, uh, you know, let's go on. I'm enjoying building houses. And I built a big private school and the football field and the baseball field and the gymnasium in uh, Kennesaw, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And had some really nice projects in the works. Uh, one of the biggest churches in Atlanta. We had the contract there. Anyway, um, he just wanted to be in the wrestling business. So he told me how much money he needed. And so 
so I agreed. And uh, I think, and I understand why Jeff did it, because that was his experience. And he couldn't hire people from WWE, but the losers at WCW were all out of work. So he was able to hire all them. And he just filled up TNA with all these people that I just thought were, you know, and I would talk to him and I would say, why would you hire somebody? A collection of people that had failed in their promotional effort. And I guess it's because it's all he knew was our thought that's all he could get but one of the guys he hired that was in charge of syndication is what really broke us because he had us buy TV ads in towns that didn't have access to pay-per-view and so one day the uh, one day the pay-per-view guy came and said, you know, all these numbers are bogus. He's lying to you. And so we were, all of a sudden we realized that we were broke, or, or near broke. And uh, Jeff got a contact with uh, Health South, Richard Scrucio nice man that I really like but everything went good for a while and then learn if Richard didn't uh, get word that his stock was going to drop and sell his stock high and ended up going to jail lost a fortune so then we were in the soup again with, without funding source and that's when uh, Dixie Carter and, and uh, Panda Energy became my partner and it was just from the day they came in I came home and told my wife I said it's just a matter of when not if it's going, going to go under. Deborah and I had bought a commercial building in Hendersonville, really nice. That's where we had our office. The day after the contracts were signed, Dixie Carter shows up and says, I'm moving the office downtown to my office. And I said, Dixie, what? Deborah and I bought this building for the wrestling. She said, well, sell it. So. How did she even become involved in the first place? Because her daddy was Panda Energy. But did you guys reach out to Panda Energy looking for someone to sell or did they reach out to you? Or? No, we, we were looking for an investor to take Richard Scrucci's place. Okay. Because this guy, and I can't remember his name, hopefully he's went to prison somewhere, but, you know, we were looking for an investor, and, and Jeff had known Dixie from the Dallas days. Come to find out, Dixie had an apartment in the same complex where I had my apartment there. And uh, Jeff and Dixie had met back then. And so Jeff hired her as something to do with promotions. And I, I deferred to Jeff on just about everything with TNA because of the George Goulas, Nick Goulas fiasco. I didn't want for Jeff to be the 
the sun like in Smokey and the Bandit. Right. So I, I deferred to him and you know when you look back maybe I should have interjected myself more. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a very, very painful memory to me. During the course of all of it, it I had a massive heart attack, triple bypass surgery. And so I can tell everybody that's looking at this, stress will kill you. And it's the most stressed I've ever been in my life. Uh, and that's saying a lot when you spent your li whole life in the wrestling business. When you're running seven towns a week or 14 towns a week, and that's the book Nothing stress. compared to that kind of stress. And so, um, Dixie and I, we didn't get along from day one uh, to the extent that when she moved downtown, uh, I stayed out there and just had my construction office in the building for my construction company. And I never took an office downtown. 